The Senate climate bill could finally be out April 22nd, the 40th anniversary of Earth Day. The lead Republican behind a cap and dividend plan talks to Clean Skies News about the path forward, even if the Senate bill falls apart. And it was lights out around the world over the weekend to observe Earth Hour, a call to action on climate change. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. Good morning, I'm Susan McGinnis. Thanks for joining us for the Energy Report on this 29th day of March 2010. The three co-authors of Senate climate legislation believe they have found a fitting day to release their bill, the 40th anniversary of Earth Day, April 22nd. Senator Lieberman of Connecticut, co-author with John Kerry and Lindsey Graham, says details of the bill will likely be released the week of April 19th. He spoke after the lawmakers met for the second time in a week with oil and natural gas industry officials in hopes of gaining support of industry. In addition to talking about possible fees on motor fuels and regulation of natural gas drilling and shale formations, those in attendance say they talked about plans to give states a say in offshore drilling within 35 miles of coast. We expect one element of the KGL bill's carbon pricing system to come from these two senators. Last week, Susan Collins, she's on your left on the screen, and Maria Cantwell talked about their bipartisan bill called the CLEAR Act. They say their cap and dividend plan would curb carbon emissions, force fossil fuel producers and importers to pay for their emissions and return a portion of the revenues to consumers. Clean Skies talked about the plan in an exclusive interview with Senator Collins. She told us her cap and dividend system can get Senator its support, even if it's not included in the KGL climate bill. I believe that our approach offers a way forward. Another option is for an energy bill. There is a bipartisan energy bill with Senators Bingaman and Murkowski to be brought to the Senate floor, and we could add the CLEAR Act to that bill. That might be a way to proceed as well. But we believe that our approach, which has the support or the interest of a wide variety of groups, including AARP, offers a new path forward. Well, Collins also explained why she thinks the House climate bill wouldn't survive a Senate floor vote and the reason President Obama might be willing to support her cap and dividend plan. You can see Tyler Suter's complete interview with Senator Collins right here at cleanskies.com. Well, one lawmaker is looking down the road to pay for half a trillion dollars in road improvements. E&E says House Transportation and Infrastructure Chairman James Oberstar, a Minnesota Democrat, is floating a plan to raise the federal gasoline tax in four years but to start investing the money now. Oberstar's plan would allow the Treasury Department to deposit $130 billion in bonds into the Highway Trust Fund right now, with the loans repaid in 2014 or 2015 with a 10 to 15 cent per gallon increase in the ta gas tax. That would pay for nearly all of Oberstar's six-year $500 billion highway bill. Oberstar raised that idea in a committee hearing on Friday. Not a formal proposal, says his spokesperson, just an idea he's been bouncing around around. Rescuers in China are scrambling to save 153 coal miners trapped by a flood on Sunday. Chinese officials say it could have started when workers digging a new mine in China's northern province of Shangxi accidentally broke into an old network of water-filled shafts. Rescuers raced to pump water from the mine. 108 workers did get out safely. The official Xinhua News Agency says President Hu Jintao ordered local authorities to spare no effort in saving the trapped workers. The accident could be one of the worst mining disasters in years if rescue efforts fail, setting back big improvements made there in mining safety. Shell is expanding into the natural gas business, quietly enlarging its position in an emerging Texas shale field, according to the Houston Chronicle. Shell U.S. President Marvin Odom says Shell has leased 150,000 acres in the Eagle Ford shale and considers that a key piece of its growing North American gas portfolio. He says Shell now holds about 21 trillion cubic feet of gas reserves. This is just the latest indicator of big oil amassing natural gas holdings spurred by new drilling technologies that have unlocked new reserves. BP recently made a deal in Eagle Ford as well, taking a 50 percent stake in Lewis Energy's holding. ConocoPhillips has 300,000 acres there. Totala France has a deal with Chesapeake Energy that could get it into the Eagle Ford play as well. Chesapeake is a supporter of the American Clean Skies Foundation, a sponsor of Clean Skies News. IAHS CIRA predicts that shale gas could account for half the U.S. natural gas supply by 2035, up from 20 percent now.
Well, from big oil to Wall Street, more energy firms are betting on a rise in natural gas prices, at, while hedge funds are still betting on prices going down. Bloomberg says despite solid inventories, everyone from Goldman Sachs to ConocoPhillips says prices are headed slowly higher, ending up in the $5 to $8 range. Indicators include major players buying into U.S. shale plays and ExxonMobil's purchase of XTO Energy. Exxon has a history of buying at the bottom of the market. The rebound is projected on higher demand from power plants and industry because of strengthening economic growth, growing demand for cleaner fuels, and rising coal prices. Goldman Sachs is now predicting $6 per million BTU in a year, despite gas's 31 percent price drop so far this year on high inventories and lower demand. Taking a look at prices right now, Henry Hub Natural Gas up about two cents to 3.89 per thousand cubic feet. Benchmark crude now at 80.65 a barrel on the NYMEX, up 65 cents. An eminent domain bill has passed Kentucky's Senate. It approved legislation giving pipeline companies disposing of carbon dioxide the right to easements across private property. This measure passed the Senate on a 30 to 8 vote on Friday and now returns to the House. Those in favor of the bill say it'll help Kentucky in its efforts to convert coal to liquid fuels. Now in the House, that bill may face an uphill battle because the Senate amended the bill to lift Kentucky's ban on constructing new nuclear power plants. In Alaska, a state Senate committee approved most of the money the governor wants for negotiations on a new natural gas pipeline. Governor Sean Parnell says the state needs to be prepared for talks on taxes and royalties with major producers. In May, the producers are holding open season bidding to reserve capacity in this planned pipeline. Cost estimates for the pipeline run 20 to 41 billion dollars and there's a potential competing project. The state house conditioned Parnell's negotiating money on the pipeline owners getting enough bids to make the project viable. Alaska's budget depends on oil and gas royalties, and Parnell said he doesn't want to be at the mercy of producers in negotiations. A new website to let Texas consumers find out their electricity use and costs in real time may not be quite ready for prime time. The site opened last week with lots of publicity from electricity distributors and state regulators. They called it a key part of the smart grid that would let consumers cut usage when prices rise during peak demand. But it turns out data are not yet quite real time, more like one to two days old as the site isn't quite ready yet to process the real-time figures. The Houston Chronicle says real-time data are expected possibly later this year. And finally, parts of the world plunged into darkness on Saturday night. Earth Hour 2010 kicked off in the Chatham Islands and ended in Samoa 24 hours later. Lights went dark at 8.30 p.m. local time in cities around the world to call attention to climate change. As the blackout hour moved across the globe, Big Ben and the Eiffel Tower flipped their switches. In Egypt, the Sphinx, in Athens, the Parthenon, and in D.C., the White House all went dark. U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said in a statement, as we watch the lights go out from continent to continent, let us reflect on the fragility and importance of our natural heritage and pledge to protect it for a sustainable future for all. More than 126 countries and half a billion people participated. That's the Energy Report. Thanks for joining us here in the Energy News Center. If you have any suggestions or comments about our programming here on Clean Skies News, we'd like to hear from you. You can email us at contact at cleanskies.com, and you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Susan McGinnis. You're watching Clean Skies News.